full swing. And down on the pitch at the moment, there's an exhibition of set dancing. Now, Claire, of course, is famous uh, for its set dancers, but often they are not being left behind either. And uh, they're being represented here today in an exhibition of the Ballinamere set. However, let's refer back again to that uh, minor final that we have just seen. Victory on the day for Cork. And uh, uh, Marty Morrissey has been speaking to the Cork minor captain, Brian O'Keefe. then from Offaly giving us the first exhibition of the set dancing here at Crow Park. Yes, that's the stuff to get you in the mood there for uh, the big match coming up. Well, even if you have no interest in Irish dancers, surely you'll have heard of the Caledonian set. St Joseph Dancers of Dura, Bearfield and Clare. Already a bit of Clare nifty footwork here at Croke Park.
Yes, political faces in the crowd here at Crow Park have enjoyed that. The dancers then finishing up with what is appropriately called the friendship set between Offaly and Clare. Did you enjoy that, Ger? That was good stuff. Marvellous stuff. <laughs> that has been ongoing, Michael, I'd say, in Clare for since the most fun. I have no doubt. I mean, obviously, yeah. being down in Limerick yourself and close to uh, the Clare border there, you, you have a, a feeling for the kind of atmosphere that's been in the county. I think words of mine fail to describe the atmosphere that has been in Clare since the beat Limerick and the Munster final. You know, but the crack and re-raw has simply been unbelievable, you know, because that in Clare. They've, they've totally enjoyed it. I and mean, the intent to enjoy themselves today, obviously hoping to make it a victory as well. The question that everybody is asking is, is this getting through to the players, do you think? Well, yes, I would say so. I mean, I'd say Clare would be very confident going into today's game. I would hope that Gerlach Nan has kept the pressure and the hype and the emotion away from, from the actual Clare team because that won't win again for, for Clare today. Like, it'd have to be a workmanlike performance as they had been achieving in all their games to date. Um, if the hype and if the tension, if the emotion of the game gets to Clare, I think they could be in a bit of trouble, you know, because after they have been through it all before, so they'll be, they'll, they'll be the cooler dressing room. DJ Carey, what about Offaly? I mean, most people are naturally enough talking about Clare going up to this All Ireland final, but you know what this Offaly team are like having played them in the Leicester final. That's right, Michael. Um, they're, they're experienced heads. They're coming up, they know what it's all about. Um, you know, there, there, there's been rumour that there's been trouble in the, in the Offaly camp during the week, and uh, we know for a fact when there's trouble in the Offaly camp to come out and to really play their best. You know, it, it's very hard to look beyond them. Uh, at the moment, and, and I, I think that they probably will win today, but it all depends. It's, it's looking like a Leinster final day, really. They, well, I was just looking over getting my shoulder here very black. at the moment, and it's gone very black and it heavy is, yeah. here, and there was the prospect of a real downpour. Uh, if the weather turns wet, will that be an awfully favour? Well, I don't think it's in anyone's favour, to be honest with you. It's as good as one as it is for the other. People say the, 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 the real bad weather is in the Leinster final. That, that isn't the way it works, right. you know. Uh, it would be as bad as one as it is for another. Now, I would say, have said if um, the, the weather was very warm, the, the, the sod was very dry, I would have said it would have been in Clare's favour because of their fitness level at the moment. Because John Troy was was troubled with injury. Uh, he's probably not 100% fit. Hubert Brigney was troubled with injury. Uh, Dahi Regan, and I would say they would have been vital sectors for for Offaly and Clare. You know, so with with the softer ground, um, it would probably suit them fellas who are not totally 100% fit. You know, uh, I'm not saying that that it's uh, in running terms are not fit. I'm just saying they were carrying injuries all along in the championship and uh, they're bound to be not 100%. We were just remarking in actual fact how much difference a month makes because a month ago we were here at Croke Park for the All-Ireland semi-finals. On that occasion, I can tell you, I was here wiping the sweat off my brow. Well, the trickles that are on the brow today are little trickles of rain. And let's hope that weather stays dry because it is looking very menacing here at the moment. Now, in just a moment here at Croke Park, Compeach John Bruton uh, is due to arrive and uh, to mark his arrival. Let's go over to our match commentator for the moment, Ger Canning. Yes, Michael, Croke Park looks absolutely magnificent. As you say, there is the real possibility of rain and the uh, clouds opening up at any second here. Let's hope that cloud passes over and we have a nice, pleasant afternoon. The rain has eased off and the surface is in very good condition, drying out the whole time, I think. As we saw in the early stages of the minor match, it was a little bit slippery underfoot, but the uh, players came to grips with the task that they faced. And, uh, as you know, that ended with uh, a straightforward victory from the men from the lead. There's an ish, Bonacol Bokele or Dynik Tak the mark on shot. Just above that, the Ord Coyle section and President Jack Boothman there in the centre of all of that. James E.O. to end the wait. Perhaps we'll know that by 5 o'clock. The 108th All-Ireland Hurling Final and the first ever meeting, of course, of Offaly and Clare. It's Offaly's fifth time in the final. Clare's fourth. Offaly with three titles. Clare just the one in 1914 where Leash were the beaten team. And are you right there, McCarthy? Are you right? Daly's going to take you home tonight. Great poetry. And a good banner as well. But it's been like that down in Clare. I was down there on Tuesday and Wednesday. The place is awash with colour. Saffron and blue just everywhere. And right into West Clare, which is football territory, you'll find teddy bears and all kinds of bunny rabbits dressed up in the colours in the hedges, out in the shrubbery as well. And everybody just has taken part in what is a carnival atmosphere. And in my estimation, Clare people here outnumber awfully people by four to one. And now the welcome for the Thesha. Mr. John Bruton, accompanied by Liam Mulvihill, 
First time here as Tishuk, of course, for the All-Ireland Hurling Final, the Guinness Championship at its conclusion. And what a wonderful setting this is, and I'm sure Antishuk is certainly going to enjoy it. But today we salute also not just the stars of 1995, but the men of yesteryear who graced this arena 25 years ago with action like this. in to his brother Pat, Pat quickly with it now on the 14-yard line, trying to get room to swing his stick, he says, to go! It's a goal for Wexford, scored by Pat Quigley. Our captain, Wheat of Kirky, how do go about it? The moment that Cork had been waiting for. Wexford 6.21 to 5.10. It was the last, it was the last of the 60-minute finals. Lehig me er an cool boy a Paddy Barry. An cool boy a Paddy Barry. Captain of the team. They beat Wexford 621 to 510. Twas the last of the 60 minute finals. Rightful back that day was Tony Maher. Mod Long Cool as ever a tree, Pat McDonnell. Officer Haven Alive Clay from Black Rock, John Horgan. <laughs> Ed Bogle Mockerin Lalina, number five on the right was Donald Clifford. <laughs> In all wheel ever a shea was Pat Hegarty. <laughs> and number seven on that victorious team was Con Roach. Lorna Park, a former winning captain of 66, Jarrell McCarthy. <laughs> in name of the Jarrell McCarthy and Lashin, to be Seamus Looney. <laughs> right half forward, he had a red head at that time, Thomas Ryan. Oh, Oakle Koshfariga, the number 11 was Willie Walsh. And as if it do you can farm move Charlie Cullinan. If it a treaty of the wee man Charlie McCarthy. If it a Kahadir, the long fellow Ray Cummins. I was able to cool dear the man that came from New York to be here today, Eddie O'Brien. <laughs> Sub goalkeeper that day and to win three All Irelands later on was Martin Coleman. And Kedinella Dinahani Gestocker about Moronadi Simon Murphy. Next to Simon Murphy, another Murphy, Joe Murphy. 
August ever nay dear gone the day a man that was to win three hurling and a football later Dennis Carlin And the final man on the panel that day, Father Shawnee Barry, he couldn't make it home from Africa for today. His cousin John Arnold is here representing Father Shawnee Barry. A card Fudden Corky, a Vui Craven Hairn, Sevlian Nedig, a Shakta, Bulabas Moor, than Lena at Fog. Oh, that is the Cork Senior Team that won the All Ireland title in 1970. Just interested to see there. John Horgan hasn't got his haircut since, obviously. But all looking hale and hearty. 25 years ago, they were champions of Ireland, beating Wexford in that final. A scoreline 621 to 510. 11 goals in that final. I doubt surely we see 11 goals in this final here today. So as the Cork team then of 25 years ago go to take their place in the Hogan stand in the background of course a new Cusick stand here at Croke Park, a very special day in this hurling final indeed because it is the first hurling final with that new uh, Cusick stand in the background and all that brings with it, the corporate boxes and uh, so forth. Of course this is also the first All-Ireland hurling final played under sponsorship, uh, under the sponsorship of Guinness and it's a very special day for RT as well. A very much extended coverage, 11 cameras pointed at the action here this afternoon for your entertainment. Let me go back again to my panel of Ger Hegarty and DJ Carey. Ger Hegarty, you fancy Clare to win this final. Yes, I do, Michael. Um, I think Clare have come through the tougher side of the draw. Uh, they've beaten Cork along the way, they've beaten Limerick, and they've beaten Galway, three of the stronger teams in the country. Limerick had been in the final last year. We certainly fancied our chances of getting back here today. Clare came out and gave us, you know, we're more, more than convincing winners in the Munster final. But, you know, the reason I fancy them is, I mean, they have exceptional levels of fitness. And right throughout the team, uh, you know, they have a very workman-like team. And the 15 very solid players who will perform today or will be doing their utmost to perform today. They will work for, one, for themselves and for one another. But on top of that, on top of the 15 players that they have, they've got five or six guys inside there who have that extra touch of class that I think you will need in a team to win an All-Ireland. I'm thinking, of course, of Jeff Fitzgerald and Goal. I'm thinking of James O'Connor and, and, and the Sparrow Lock up front. I'm thinking of, of uh, Brian Lawn, obviously, who's been outstanding all year. And I think, most of, most of all, I would think of Liam Doyle, who, in my mind, has been Clare's most outstanding player this year. GJ, from an awfully point of view, they might claim something of the same credentials because before this year's championship, everyone fancied you, Kilkenny, to take that title. That's right, Michael. Um, we, we, we went into it, especially after the league, as hot favourites, but uh, awfully had other things on their mind and, and they beat us fairly uh, well in, in the Leinster final. Although they haven't been impressive before that uh, and after that, really, you know, so their form is a little bit up and down. Sure. Um, I, I, I'd fancy awfully purely on beating us, really, and it might be just uh, as simple as that, as, yeah. Simple yeah. As that you know. Yeah. Um, they may not be as good as that, and they may, not be, they may be better, sure. uh, but certainly on that performance, they can be very good. Sure. Where would you see the biggest threat for Clare today? Is it just the fact that it's a, a big final, a big occasion for them? Yes, of course. Um, I mean, the, the occasion itself will be a huge threat in itself for for, um, uh, for Clare and the fact that I hope they settle and I hope they settle early and I hope the, the day isn't too big for, for them and themselves. On the field of play, I think their six backs will have to be extremely tight on the six forwards, um, for, on the six offensive forwards. But in particular, their half forward line have a huge job today. They must not allow the offensive half back line to dominate the game and to, do, to do supply the type of ball that the offensive forwards have been trying on today. If, they, if the three half forwards for, for Clare can get on top and stay on top, I think that will be a huge sector to be, to be winning. Well, gentlemen, it will all be revealed in uh, the next uh, hour or so here at Croke Park. The teams are due out into the field very shortly, looking down through the programme, and my goodness, what a shout there is going to be for the players of Clare when they come out. However, it will be the All-Ireland ch uh, champions, Offaly, who are due out of the pitch first. Let's go back again to Ger Canning. Yes, there's a great deal of nervous tension down in the dressing room areas, has been since about half past two. Awfully were the uh, first in here. Eamon Cregan was telling me it's not quite as bad as it was last year. They got some of the nerves out of that particular stage. And there's the battery of camera people. One of them missing is Des Barry, indisposed, but if I know Des, and I do know very well, he won't be indisposed for long, and he's wished well by all his uh, fellow cameramen.
There they are to get the best possible pictures. Let's hope it doesn't rain on that particular gentleman's shoulders. It uh, continues to look a little bit ominous, but there's a wonderful splash of saffron and blue around three quarters of the ground, or so it seems. And of course, the Offaly fans packed into Hill 16. Who will it be in this year's All-Ireland Championship, the final of the 108th Championship? We've already had one All-Ireland Champion this weekend, that's Michael Duxy Walsh of Kilkenny. He won his 11th successive All-Ireland 60 by 30 handball last night. And first into the fray, it's the defending All-Ireland Champions from Offaly. Bidding to be the first team from the faithful county to put All-Ireland titles back to back. David Hughes, the goalkeeper, moving through there. The build-up in the Midlands, of course, has been just as exciting as in Clare, if a little bit more low-key. But will that be a help for the Johnny Pilkington captain team and Egan, Eamon Cregan coached, of course? Croke Park, very much a home from home for this awfully side, going to have the photographs taken straight away. Will their greater experience, allied to their undoubted talents, be enough to see them through this afternoon? And the answer will begin to unfold between now and five o'clock. Johnny Pilkington there in the centre, Brian Whelan there, Michael Dignan moving through, goalkeeper David Hughes playing in his first All-Ireland final, Dohi Regan there as well, and the substitute, last year's captain Martin Hanami there, just bending forward along with Johnny. Like greyhounds out of the traps, they're ready to move out as quickly as possible. And uh, this, a check on the team, the Offaly selectors off for one positional switch from the uh, semi-final, Michael Dagnan and Joe Dooley switch positions, clearly Dagnan's power and mobility will be used in an attempt to unruffle the composure of Clare's Liam Doyle while Joe Dooley's cunning could unnerve cornerback Michael O'Halloran, indeed the Dooley brothers in the forward line are joined by a second cousin at full forward, that's Pat O'Connor, the goal poacher in last year's final and the men that they have on the bench, very, very impressive as well, as we know only too well. Players like Brendan Kelly and Declan Pilkington that they can bring at any stage. And Gary Cahill and Joe Erity among the backs. John, Jim Troy, of course, his brother John is the centre-forward. Jim, the sub-goalkeeper there, number 16. And my goodness, there is plenty of talent at Eamon Cregan's disposal. So the surface continuing to dry more and more and more. And... Uh, Hopefully, we'll be in for a right good afternoon. Hubert Rigney here has been a fair bit of coaching down in Offaly of late, I understand. He coached the St. Rhinos under-14s to win the county championship a couple of weeks back. So if they're looking for a manager in a few months' time or even in a few years' time, who knows, Hubert might be one of the names that people will be thinking about. Hubert playing in his eighth championship match this afternoon. And here's Johnny Dooley. Johnny scored eight points in 1989 in the minor final against Clare. How he has tormented teams time and again over the years. His clash this afternoon with Anthony Daly, the Clare captain, is one we're looking forward to. And now I sense with the noise in the background as we watch Brian Whelan, hurlers, hurler of the year last year. The Clare fans are just waiting and waiting. 63 years, Pat O'Connor, the full forward this afternoon for Offaly. They're used to being here. Michael Dignan, the various officials here, waiting. And now the moment all Clare has waited for, and probably 30 other counties as well. Anthony Daly of the Clare Castle Magpies leads out the Bannermen. This is the warmest welcome any team is likely to get in Crow Park. A deafening ovation, a sea of saffron and blue. A year that commenced with optimism has gone on to produce concrete res rewards and results. There was a place in the league final, a first Munster win for 63 years. And Conor Clancy and company now looking for a first All-Ireland since 1914. Young and old alike are proclaiming heroes. The hype has been unsurpassed. I mentioned Clare Castle, every window seemed to have colourful teddies and buntings and flags. The chemist shop were offering saffron and blue products. Brides-to-be were being offered a choice of saffron and blue dresses. Anthony Daly coming across here for the players, of course. The difficult task of putting aside the sense of occasion. The Clare mentors resist the temptation to make changes, relying instead on the same 15 that began the Munster final and All-Ireland semi. This means that Brian Lowen marshals the defence from full-back and team captain, of course, Anthony Daly, left half-back. It's Ollie Baker and James O'Connor in the midfield and all in sundry hope for another bumper harvest of goals from the likes of Stephen McNamara and Ger, better known as the Sparrow, O'Loughlin.
So Clare's subs, and I can tell you there's been a very late addition to the Clare substitute list. Not on, or is it on there? It isn't. Number 25 is going to be Eamon Tapp, I've just been told. And he could come in at full forward, did so well, of course, in the league series, but has been down with injury ever since. But what about that? Cyril Lyons, Jim McInerney, Alan Neville, any of them could come on and play their part in this All-Ireland final for 1995. There's PJ O'Connell there in the centre, Liam Doyle, the smashing wing half back who's been outstanding this year. James O'Connor, Fergal Hegarty there as well. That's Stephen McNamara. The fair hair there will be covered up with a black helmet very shortly. Brian Lone and his brother Frank there. In between them was Michael O'Halloran, the right corner back. Davy Fitzgerald, they break away. And it's the Clare team who goes down towards their fans at the canal end. Every vantage point taken up, good and bad. Nobody wants to miss a second of what we hope will be a gripping All-Ireland final. But there is so much tension, so much, much expectation about. And those lucky enough to get the precious little passes, the tickets that saw them in here to see this final. And some familiar music in the background as we watch Liam Doyle who initiates a lot of clear attacks with his clearances down the middle. He's having a great year and returns to Croke Park for a second All-Ireland medal. Remember, his first was two years ago, that at junior level. Aha, the Indians have come here as well. And we know that the Biddy Early Bowron beaters are somewhere up in the canal section as well. P.G. O'Connell, known as Fingers to one and all, really reveled in the vast open spaces of Thurless where he was able to make runs at opponents. But uh, it'll be a bit more difficult, I sense, here. Brian Lowen here of the Wolf Tone stop playing in his ninth championship match. And he's had a wonderful year so far. I'm sure he agrees. Man, a few words, I think. Every manner of headgear being used, that's uh, Ollie Baker there. Interesting this afternoon, the two midfielders for Clare come from the same club, say Joseph Dura Bearfield, and the two midfielders for Offaly come from the same club, that's from the All-Ireland champions from Burr. Has that ever happened before, I wonder, in an All-Ireland senior decider? Well, so much depends on James O'Connor. Bye-bye, Biddy. Yes, the curse has been well and truly laid to rest. And I mentioned the Bowron beaters uh, doing a solo act here. I'm sure the rest of the ensemble are up there behind her. And while it's all about Clare so far, let's not forget Johnny Pilkington and his wonderful Offaly team. Disappointed, I'm sure, that his brother Declan isn't part of the starting 15, but he's one of the options open to Eamon Cregan as well. What a year this fellow's had. He captained Burr to the All-Ireland Club Championship back, back here in March. In fact, I think we nearly went into April. It was a replay, of course. And the Yabba Dabba Dooley clan had done well also, coming back here to claim another Leinster title. Anthony Daly on the right, Johnny Pilkington on the left. And in the centre, referee Dickie Murphy taking charge of his second All-Ireland senior final. One of the very best officials in the game. His two linesmen today will be Willie Barrett and Pat Delaney. And who's got the call? It's Johnny Pilkington. So, awfully won the toss. And the little slip of paper is handed over. Six for two, eyes of blue and Dohi Regans after you. Tremendous points in the country. And this, of course, Tomas Mulcahy, one of the toughest parts of the day for the players, trying to get rid of the nerves. That's right, sure. And um, obviously the players themselves will be very glad to get out on the field and get a few pucks into play. President Mary Robinson, accompanied by the president of Common Luke Class Grail, Mr. Jack Boothman. Part of the ceremonial here on All Ireland Final Day. stand on the new packed packed to the seams literally about 66,000 people here don't have an official attendance just yet but the awfully players quickly then in on the left hand side to meet the president of Ireland and uh, they're becoming a little bit more familiar with this of course the big screen in the background what they call in Dublin the big telly and first it'll be Johnny Pilkington the awfully captain looking composed to introduce his teammates, starting with goalkeeper David Hughes. 
Shane McGuckin there alongside, and Kevin Keenan, whose grandfather was a champion world cyclist and cycled around Croke Park in the early years of this century in the old Tarleton Games. Kevin Martin and Dohi Regan, there's Johnny Dooley. And moving right along the line to Michael Dignam. Billy Dooley gets married next Saturday, so a big occasion for him. And Joe Dooley bidding to be the first Offaly man to win three All-Ireland senior medals. They're very much the favourites, skilled craftsmen. Now Dickie Murphy introducing his two linesmen, Pat Delaney on the left and Willie Barrett from Tipperary on the right. And then Anthony Daly, this time in 63 years that Clare reached the All-Ireland final. And a huge cheer now. President meeting Brian Lowen and his brother Frank there alongside him. Liam Doyle then next, and that's Sean McMahon. James O'Connor is in there with Ollie Baker. That's Fergie Tui, PJ O'Connell, Fergal Hagerty. And then meeting Stephen McNamara, Connor Clancy, the full forward, and also Ger the Sparrow O'Loughlin. And so as the ceremonies were almost completed here at Croke Park, we must take a quick commercial break. We're back after that with the All-Ireland Hurling Final. Canning and Tomás Mulcahy. It's an absolutely tremendous spectacle. Uniquely Irish, it has to be said. Up on Hill 16, there's a mix. Some of the Clare fans up there along with the Offaly following. But throughout the ground, the ground absolutely packed to capacity. And it seemed that Offaly there were a little bit more focused. Look at them, heads down, looking right ahead. Some of the Clare players from time to time looking about or passing water around from one to the other. It's different, different, difficult to separate the, the hype that's all was there from the match itself. The Sparrow trying to concentrate all his energies. And they break from the parade. And at this final today, we're about to honour the memory of those who died in the great famine which ravaged our nation 150 years ago. A million died of hunger and starvation. A million left these shores after what was a watershed in Irish history. The players lining up in a huddle. Clare on the left-hand side. Awfully, in fact, going into their positions. Just once the music ends on the public address, we will commemorate the Great Famine. A, co a call down. We commemorate this year the 150th anniversary of the Great Famine. In memory of the many people who died here in Ireland and in foreign lands, let us stand and pause for a moment's silence in prayerful remembrance. Solas Navlahas to his galeer. There's colour, there's excitement, 
There's everything we could wish for on the first Sunday in September. A quick check on the Offaly side. Unchanged, just that positional switch involving Michael Dykner, number 12, and Joe Dooley. Unchanged, that is, from the semi-final. And likewise, Clare going into this final with the same 15 that won through against Galway. Brian Lowe and the strong man in the full-back line. James O'Connor, the number eight, very much to look out for in midfield. The referee, then, is Dickie Murphy. And all of his umpires coming from the Rapparees Club down in Wexford. John Tyrrell, Paul Shiggins, Morgan Murphy and Paddy Buckley as the match gets underway. And Offaly, of course, who won the toss playing from left to right in the first half. Straight away, it's Joe Dooley. Johnny Dooley, his brother, in pursuit over there. Ball knocked away by Ollie Baker. Straight as far as Dohi Regan. Here's the first chance, and there's the first point. Clare were chasing in packs there, but this man was left unmarked and an easy point. Yes, a great start for Offaly, you know, and that's something that Clare can probably do right at this stage, you know. Um, the early tension is bound to be there, and uh, they'll be hoping to keep Offaly down to the bare minimum for the next five or ten minutes. Davy Fitzgerald holding up the ball because there's an injury here to Ollie Baker. And Jerry Lockdown out there, along with the uh, team doctor, who's Connor Fanning, and an eye injury which he sustained in the very first minute of this match. Doesn't look particularly serious. Let's hope it isn't. Perhaps just a flesh wound. And there we have the Derry O'Donovan on the right-hand side and, of course, Eamon Cregan, both of them from Limerick, and Derry in charge of the physical preparation. So much has been said about Clare's superiority in terms of fitness. Don't be kidded. Awfully are just as fit, I think. I would think so, Jerry. you know, and... Uh... Clare themselves will be determined to get a very, very good start today, you know. Um, they've had a lot of pressure over the last maybe week, two weeks, and uh, today if they can get off to a good start, I think they're in a very good chance. Little or no breeze around. That a tribute, I think, to the heavy rain we had earlier on. Great dropping ball there, won by Hubert Rigney. Winning that first ball with himself and P.G. O'Connell. That's Liam Doyle firing it downfield. David Hughes out quickly. The hand pass outside to Kevin Keenahan. Knocking aside all would-be challengers, still Keenahan dispossessed magnificently over there by Conor Clancy. Picked up here by Stephen McNamara, trying to make some headway in the deafening noise of Croke Park. There's support, but he's closed down quickly by Brian Whelahan. Back of support here from the Sparrow, did he cross over the end line? He did, and the umpire there waving at the referee saying, I was flagging it wide. But an encouraging attack there, the umpire, the one who uh, waved that one wide. I think Jerry, the umpire there had his hand up for 65 and uh, Dickie Murphy changed his mind for him, I think, and uh, gave a, a wide ball. David Hughes from St. Rhinos in Banagher. Down through the centre. John Troy tussling for it, Sean McMahon, it comes out as far as Johnny Dooley. And the whistle has sounded, the referee's got in there and he's having a word with uh, Brian Lohan and also with Pat O'Connor. First clash which he didn't appreciate, it's Pat O'Connor who's deemed the more guilty party. It's going to be a Clare free. Davy Fitzgerald coming to take it and Pat O'Connor wants another stick. Dickie always on top of the game and a switch straight away with Joe Dooley coming back to left half forward and Michael Dagner going into top of the left. It's a long, long free. P.G. O'Connell got a stick to it. Likewise, Fergie Tui. Hubert Rigney waiting there with Dohi Regan. Comes out instead towards Ali Baker. Drops it down to P.G. O'Connell. How a point would settle down this team, but he can't produce it. That's another wide, the second of the game so far. Yes, Jordan, I think we're in for some very interesting duels today. We have Anthony Daly on Johnny Dooley with PJ O'Connell versus Hugo Rigney. We have James O'Connell and Johnny Pickleton, and you have Brian Lowen versus Pat O'Connor. There's some, going to be some very, very big duels there. Especially when Clare depends so much on James e. O'Connor. Can he engineer something out of midfield for them? Dohi Regan breaks it down, but it comes instead to a Clare player who's fouled. And Clare concerned is Dohi Regan fouling Fergal Hagerty. Free to the Banner County. Anthony Daly will take it. A huge one. Looks very good indeed. Drops right in there. Kevin Keenan touches away with a stick. Comes back out towards Kevin Martin. Martin, the left half back, relieving the danger. 
up towards Joe Dooley has made the switch as we told you just a moment ago with Michael Dignan darting away from the challenges a high ball dropping down out of the clouds they wait inside for it Billy Dooley his brother beaten for it by Frank Lowen and incoming here is Johnny Dooley outside towards Billy Billy Dooley pursued and challenged by Frank Lowen and Brian but he still has enough room to swing the stick and he puts it over the bar Billy Dooley's first point a second for Offaly and they've settled down much much better perhaps showing the experience of the big occasion here at Croke Park this sure, that was great play again by Johnny Dooley you know to find out can pass the ball out and a uh, great score by Offaly well, the, the brothers, of course, have a telepathic understanding with one another, and there are three of them in the Offaly forward line. Here's Dohi Regan again. A backhanded pass to his midfield ally, who's Johnny Pilkington. Into the corner, too much, however, for Billy Dooley to get onto. From one of the smallest parishes, not just in Offaly, but in Ireland, from Clarine, the home of the Sir Kieran's Club, who provide four members of this Offaly team. There's about six from the Clare Castle Club, the Clare Castle Magpies, involved in the Clare panel, including the team captain. Well cut up. PJ O'Connor being beaten for it by Brian Wheelham. Wheelham pursuing him. Johnny Pilking with the shoulder there on James e. O'Connor. The hand pass outside towards his midfield partner, Ulrich Baker, steadying himself, hit it poorly. A hint of the nerves, I think. Coming back out here towards Fergal Hagerty. Right on the end line. Clare's cohesion is certainly lacking in the early attacks. They haven't settled down at all so far. David Hughes playing in a fifth championship match this afternoon. It's still afternoon. Joe Dooley tries to make it his, it runs away from him unkindly, however. Liam Doyle, pressurised the whole time by the wily number 12, number 15 rather, playing in the number 12 position now. Pat O'Connor, did he step over the line? And the linesman over there is waving furiously. Linesman over there is Willie Barrett. So a clear sideline ball. And they need a score to settle. Yes, sir, they need a score, and I think Offaly, as we said beforehand, have been very focused on their play, you know, and uh, they've shown a very, very determined attitude for the first five or six minutes. Well cut up by Liam Doyle. And another sideline ball going to result, Jerry Lockdown in the background over there. Encouraging Willie Barrett to make sure that it's going to be a clear sideline ball, protests all around. great experience and great craft in this Offaly team. They're not all Ireland champions for nothing. So the Bowrongs in the background encouraging Liam Doyle as he whips it in. And towards P.G. O'Connell, breaks back out here to Johnny Pilkington, the Offaly captain once again. Fergie Tui lashing it across here for Fergal Hager to run after, run after. Brian Whelan beating him. Touchdown by Frank Lowen. Here's Lowen, younger of the two brothers, sons of Gus, battered down, missed by Kevin Keenan, comes out to Hubert Rigney. Wonderful craft, excellent skill. Liam Doyle winning the race for possession with Joe Dooley. James e. O'Connor, can he fire over the first point? Drops down David Hughes, oh, he bats it away. He was in trouble there. The forward stayed sufficiently far away from him to allow him to regain. It's going to be a free out. This is what happened here as that ball came down very dangerously. All eyes on the ball, fumbled, and then nursed away out of the danger zone. Remember Jim Troy having uh, some problems as well against Limerick last year. It's a very nervous position to play, as well they all are. You've played in five All-Ireland Finals. That's right, Gerard, and everyone was as nervous as the last one. Sure it is. Sean McMahon misses that one, but assisting him in his great full-back there, Brian Lowen. What a year he's having. 65 metres out from his own goal, he leaves the ball behind. Johnny Pilkington's shot is blocked by Sean McMahon. Hand passed outside to Anthony Daly. Just two points to show then for the opening nine minutes. All scores going to Offaly, the All-Ireland champions. P.G. O'Connell unable to profit by that pass, it's Dohi Regan instead. 
Joe Dooley effectively missing it. Comes back here instead to Ollie Baker. Trying to pass it forward to P.J. O'Connell. Intercepted. Johnny Dooley back in there. And they're whipping at it furiously. Comes to P.J. O'Connell. Dashes away from the challenge. The hand pass. A little bit long. Fergal Hagerty. Did well to keep it moving inside. And here's the sparrow. Jerry Lachlan without the hurley. Tight challenges coming in. That's Brian Whelan. And really the number 12 is going to have to try and put the shackles on Brian Whelan if he can. And that's going to be so difficult. Sean McMahon. There's the shot and it's going over the bar. Sean McMahon. The first player player to score in an All-Ireland final for 63 years. It's two points to one. And are they happy? Well, I think they'll feel if they can keep it nice and tight, anything is possible. That ball came out a long distance beyond James e. O'Connor, out as far as the centre half back, Shawnee McMahon, and he drove it with determination over. Now let's see if that can settle down the Banner County. Here's Liam Doyle. Getting up such great length into it. Instead, it's Johnny Pilkington in midfield going towards the right. Just the first wide for Offley. They're usually very good at using possession. Tension etched on every one of those faces, I think. Davy Fitzgerald in his 13th championship match. Will be 13th and lucky at that. Down towards Fergal Hegarty again. Does well to get out ahead of Brian Whelan. That could be a vital tussle if he can somehow limit the effectiveness of Offley's number five as we watch the Sparrow run after that dropping ball dropped by Martin Hanamy and out over the end line. This time it is a 65, no doubt about it. Some anxious moments there for Martin Hanamy. This is as the ball dropped into the waiting arms there of Fergal Hagerty. Sean McMahon got, I think, three or four points in the National League final. Two points so far in the campaign in the championship. This to tie it up. It looks OK. It's over the bar. The sides are level. Clare making a full recovery from the 65 of Sean McMahon. Who would have guessed he'd be their only scorer? After 12 minutes. <laughs> Here's the puck out. Baker against Regan, two strong, tall, physically imposing men. And the linesman here is going to throw the ball in. A little uncertainty as to who touched it last. Pat Delaney. And really, they're all, plus the rest of them, supposed to be 13 metres back. Anthony Daly and uh, Johnny Dooley, the two most keenly concerned. Won by Anthony Daly, back however as far as Brian Wheelahan. Touched on there by Michael Dyglin, but comes to Sean McMahon. Across towards Fergie to his corner, runs on towards Stephen McNamara. McNamara against Martin Hanami. Hanami doing well. Comes out here to Johnny Pilking to do this. so much selfless running. Back and forth, and it's going to be a clear free. Michael Dyglin then. A look of displeasure on his face. And uh, we've got some sideline news from Tony O'Donoghue. Tony. The Offaly dugout are a bit worried at this stage, Jerry, I can tell you. They've been talking to their half-forward line of Dooley, Dooley and Troy, telling them to get out as far as the midfield, try and make some space inside for the full forward line. Sounds like a firm of solicitors, Dooley, Dooley and Troy. McMahon, the taker. Runs on in towards the man they call Fingers, but he can't get a touch on it. But it'll be a clear sideline ball. It's just interesting to hear that, Joe, because Shawnee McMahon certainly has turned it into the game at centre back for clear, you know. And uh, the half back line has been their inspiration all, all year as well, you know. And uh, if they can dominate there and if can keep jo Johnny Dooley especially quiet in the half hour line, I think clear are in a very, very good chance. Joe Lockdown, his first occasion to be involved, of course, as player or mentor in an All Ireland final. And when Cregan played in three All Ireland finals, Zolly Baker cuts it in. Is that the lead? It is! Clare in front! Recovered from injury, and he slots it over the bar. So we've had a point from play, a point from a 65, and a point from a sideline. No wonder they're happy. They lead by three points to two. The running repairs to Ollie Baker have worked very effectively. 
Puck out quickly taken. Now let's see whether that half forward line can get going for Offaly. Runs on here towards Michael Dignan. Operating at top of the left, marked by Michael O'Halloran. And it's going to be an Offaly sideline ball, or rather a Clare sideline ball. A word there from Eamon Cregan to Michael Dignan. Perhaps they feel they can benefit by Dignan's presence in there against Michael O'Halloran, who's been talked about as a weakness, but uh, nobody's cleaned them out in any match so far. Liam Doyle. Towards PJ O'Connell, picked up instead here by a determined Dohi Regan. The hand pass, expecting somebody to come its way, and it's going to be an awfully free for that foul on the well-built Dohi Regan. Not an easy man to put down. And this wasn't Bruno against McCall either. Down he went. Freshening breeze and indications of the background that the rain that we feared is about to materialize. And those seats there in the front of the new stand, quite open. Sherlock now there with Tony Considine, two of the triumvirate, along with Mike McNamara, of course. Johnny Dooley then, the side trailing by just a point. Free just outside the 65 meter line. Whipped in with good direction, stopped by David Fitzgerald. Good save by the fair custodian. Long, long delivery of ball down towards Fergie Tui. P.G. O'Connell, they're working really hard, each and every one of the Clare players. They've settled to the task now well. This is well won by Kevin Keenahan. Indestructible, comes out, whips it to the middle of the field towards Johnny Dooley. Had a support outside with Johnny Pilkin and opted instead to go more direct. Brian Lohan going very low to pick that one up against Pat O'Connor. Almost stumbled. Hand pass towards his team captain, John Troy. Hasn't really gone into the match so far against Anthony Daly here. Hagerty beaten for it. That's Hubert Rigney standing on, standing well. Doyle leaving it behind there to James O'Connor to pick up. The young school teacher from St. Flannan's in Ennis. A Sparrow O'Loughlin outnumbered, but still managing to get it out as far as P.G. O'Connell. Oh, diagonally across. Deceiving most of them. Stephen McNamara having to go back for it. Remember the goal he got against Galway. Turning there against Martin Hanami. Got a nice little block on it. They waited inside, but the ball never came. Hanami, little block also for McNamara. Johnny Pilkington out as far as Kevin Martin. Martin from Tullamore in County Offaly. Look at the work of Johnny Pilkington here. It often goes unrecognised. Good ball down. And they're all in for it here. And Dignan just didn't manage to keep the ball in play however but there was a touch and it's gone for a 65 Offaly's first 65 of the match this was a good uh, save here by David Fitzgerald chest tie taking it down with confidence and then away from the full forward son of the county secretary the genial Pat Fitzgerald of course who's been inundated with requests for tickets like Christy Todd his opposite number in Offaly over the last four weeks Johnny Dooley will be the taker. Can he level up proceedings here? That looks OK, it's over the bar. And they're level. Johnny Dooley's first point in this match, coming from the 65. And it's even Stephen here, after about 18 minutes of the first half. It's very interesting, though, Jared, that both defences are really on top, you know, and there's no real pattern of play developed yet at this stage, and uh, both teams will probably be looking for a greater return from their forwards. Brian Whelan is injured as he comes down, a little hand injury, play continuing. The back line again of Offaly here, asked a few questions of, and it's Kevin Martin who responds, but only had as far as James e. O'Connor fumbled initially, first touch wasn't good. Johnny Pilkington working all over the field to Joe Dooley, Joe the provider in towards the inside forward line, Brian Lowen there, challenged by Pat O'Connor, kicking it away from the danger zone. Lowen's on the ground, that's going to be a free. Tempers heating just a little bit. Very much in the heat of the battle, but Brian Lowen was full of awareness that time, wonderfully composed in all of his actions. Deserving of all the accolades that he's received this season, starting back in the league final against Kilkenny when he was deemed man of the match. This was the challenge. Sean McMahon's free. 
Hubert Rigney out there first time. Johnny Pilkington ready to pull on it. Here's Liam Doyle, the wing back. Hopefully we'll be hoping to close down on him a little bit more because he initiates so many good attacks. Ollie Baker racing. Hubert Rigney also in the race. That's a good block down by Hubert, won back by Ollie Baker, but he picked the ball off the ground. And it's a free to Offaly. This is the incident once again as he went down. Claims, I feel, that the ball was just a little bit elevated. Referee not interested. Brian Wheelahan today playing in a 14th championship match. Man of the match in last year's final, of course. So about 15 minutes to go to half-time. As Tomas Mulcahy was saying, each forward line really struggling to come to terms with this match so far. Ollie Baker... Johnny Pilkington certainly the decisive factor around midfield. Michael Dignan, there's a block on that one as well. Joe Dooley racing in there against Michael O'Halloran. Now can he slip in by the back door? He's won a free from the 20-metre line. Disappointment for O'Halloran of Six Mile Bridge. Well, certainly when Joe Dooley takes on defenders, he's very difficult to dispossess. And over he went that time. That's right, Joe. You can see the defender there with a hand on top of his back, you know, and it's a definite free. He doesn't agree, mind you. Or would you expect it? Johnny Dooley, a point so far, that from a 65. And this to restore Offaly's lead. The cheers ringing in his ears. Clare fans on the canal end. But it's over the bar. Johnny making no mistake. He very rarely does. So two points from Freeze, and Offaly are back in front again. And there's Brendan War there in the centre, the chairman of the Offaly County Board, Joachim Kelly, Paul Mulher there also, Andy Gallagher back towards the left-hand side of that group. Tilkington missing it on this occasion. Now PJ O'Connell. They're hoping to use possession a bit more, hoping to work a bit harder perhaps inside there and cause problems for the Offaly backs. Here's Fergie Tui, shortened the grip on the stick, Hubert Rigney puts out that stick, doesn't manage to stop it completely. Ollie Baker, one of the point scorers. A stalemate situation eventually broken up. John Troy gets good length into it, away from Sean McMahon, trying to feed the wings. Billy Dooley racing for that, but this is won by Frank Lowen. Cross towards Fergie Tui again, putting Kevin Martin under pressure, responded well. Johnny Pilkington having difficulty taking up initially. The hand pass towards Hubert Rigney, playing very solidly at centre-half back. The same towards the corner. Michael Dignan trying to slip inside his man there. But that's going to be a clear sideline ball. Exchanging a few pleasantries. I wonder will Mike McNamara be on Eamon Cregan's Christmas list for a Christmas card this year? All very much in the heat of the occasion. Coaches certainly and selectors have done so well this year to bring their team to this final. PJ O'Connell didn't get any length in that one. Kevin Martin instead whipping it away. Awfully trying to play more first time, more direct hurling. But here's Frank Lowen. Touched by Brian Wheel, had kept it away there well from the Sparrow, who hasn't really got into this match. Wheelan has held, it's going to be a free for Offaly. Connor Clancy here from Kilmele. Also a very useful footballer, as they were telling me over the last couple of weeks. There are a number of options, of course, for Clare in the full forward line, notably Sir Lyons, Jim McInerney, if they ever wish to make changes. Kevin Keenahan. John Troy winning that one just about. Keeping it moving ahead to Johnny Dooley. Looking for another snapshot and another point. Looks great, and that's over the bar. A third point for Johnny Dooley. Just the first from play. And... The referee in there again having words with uh, Brian Lowen and with Pat O'Connor. 
They were following the flight path of the ball. This is what happened as Pat raced him, tumbled over Davy Fitzgerald. And a few words were spoken. I think there was a few words spoken there. I was just to think his momentum carried him into the net, following in the ball from Johnny Dooley. But now Offaly take a two-point lead. And Brian Whelan had challenged very high indeed by P.G. O'Connell, who's about to have his name taken. So the first booking is to P.G. O'Connell. Offaly making some positional switches. Michael Dagnan's now gone to top of the right as he watched this challenge again, which was very high, dangerously so, and certainly Brian Whelan felt it. So let's hope now that the game will continue to be played in a good sporting fashion. O'Connell has been warned. Free to Offaly, Brian Whelan the taker. From the centre of the field. Ammunition in for the forwards. Batted down. Comes in instead as far as Davy Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald's huge clearance. Kevin Martin and Fergie Tui breaking the stick in that collision. And appeals once again, but it's going to be awfully possession. And down on the field, there's an awfully player. Perhaps something that happened off the ball. It's Joe Dooley who's down injured. Eamon Krieger in very quickly there, along with the various medical people. Just wondered what happened to Joe Dooley as the play was at the other end of the field. The referee has called aside Liam Doyle. Clearly he feels that he was involved. I'm sure his linesmen or umpires have told him. And so now Clare with a second player booked. Doyle joining O'Connell in the referee's notebook. It's getting a bit more physical. It certainly is, Jerry, you know, and um, we've seen very little from both forwards, you know, and um, we'd like to see the game open up a small bit more and maybe more first-time hurling being played. There's a lot of pulling and dragging at this stage. Well, just two forwards have scored from play so far, Billy Dooley and Johnny Dooley for Offaly. None of the Clare forwards scoring from play to date. This is caught by Sean McMahon, who's got two points for Clare. It's kicked forward there by Joe Dooley, happily recovered. Won't come up there for Michael O'Halloran. Greasy surface following the rain we had here this morning. Joe Dooley racing back for it, won, however, by Ollie Baker. Across it comes there towards Fergie Tui. Nice pick up. An angled ball across towards Gerald Lachlan. The forwards looking for possession. And the followers looking for scores. A partial block there by Brian Wilhelm. Good craftsmanship and good technique. The persistence, however, by the Sparrow carrying him in there close to Martin Hanami struggling to get the ball away but does so effectively at the end only as far as Fergie Tui Tui going by Kevin Martin tricky angle, he's put it over the bar Fergie Tui the first of the Clare forwards to score and there's just a point in it Offaly 5, Clare 4 it's a low enough scoring All-Ireland final Regan getting the measure here of Fergal Hagerty has moved in towards midfield in the switch with Ali Baker that's got over the bar a point there by John Troy so once again Offaly push out the lead it's now two points once again young man from Losma of course brother of Jim who's the sub keeper for this Offaly panel Hubert Rigney P.J. O'Connell has now got in full forward for Offaly. And Conor Clancy is on the 40. Brian Lowen overreaching himself, but clearly the referee says there was some holding. Indicting Pat O'Connor. Clare get the free. So far, it's been all about atmosphere and occasion. We look for a bit more substance, however. Davy Fitzgerald's long, long ball dropping right into the inside forward line. O'Connor leaving it there for Stephen McNamara. And it's just gone whizzing past David Hughes' goal. 
Well, they had a chance. Feels that it might have been a 65. Here it is once again. It was a bit of a half chance there you know, for, a, for a shot of goal, and uh, I must say, uh, I put a question on the piece for a 65 as well. The injury here to Brian Wheelahan. He's certainly been in the wars, a head injury earlier on. The hopefully, doctor is Brendan Lee. And Derry O'Donovan in there attending as well with the John's Ambulance people. Sherlock Nan, who's done a wonderful job to bring his side through the Munster Championship to take that championship and bridge a gap of 63 years. And Eamon Cregan, likewise, one of the great coaches in senior hurling. He won't want to see anything happen to one of his star players, Brian Wheelahan, who limps back into the action. Five minutes to go to the half-time break. So here's the puck out. Going away to the left half forward position towards Michael Dignan once again, who's back there. Fergie Tui slipping in the very tricky conditions, showing a clean pair of heels to Johnny Pelkington and also to Michael Dignan. Dignan going back with determination, however. Tui kicking it back towards a colleague, Ollie Baker. And the last one to touch it was an awfully man. And one of the switches that Clare often make has materialised once again. James e. O'Connor has gone to left half forward, but he's on Brian Wheelahan, struggling with a bit of an injury, but uh, certainly among Offaly's very best defenders. Ollie Baker. Straight to Hubert Rigney. He mops up a whole lot of ball. Always perfectly positioned. Reads the game so well. Likewise, Liam Doyle for Clare. Now James e. O'Connor. Can he get some change? Touched inside there. Kevin Martin. Squirms his way around but takes far too many steps and he says, I was being held. What do you expect me to do? Not at all pleased, but Claire have the chance to draw within a point of Offaly. This is what happened here as Kevin Martin was wriggling his way out of that group of players. Certainly took far too many steps before placing it on the stick. James e. O'Connor should be a relatively easy one for him. And is his first point in this match. That'll do his confidence no end of good. Likewise, the Clare following. One between them. Three minutes to go to half time. So, Jerry, it's, it's hard to say who's going to be the happier of the teams at this stage, you know. Offaly have managed to kind of lay siege there on. And Clare's goal for a while, bro, can I need too much scores either, you know, so... But Clare will surely be happy enough not to have been blown out in the opening half an hour. That's right. They've lived with Offaly, and here's Fergie Tui sending in that shot. Goalkeeper David Hughes keeping it in play. Putting Liam Doyle under some pressure. Against Michael Dignan, in the Pat O'Connor. John Troy kicking it back to himself there. And to his colleague Liam Doyle was Ollie Baker. Two players under the dropping ball, and that's Connor Clancy. Way out now from his full forward position, playing on the 40. Hubert Rigney, nobody pressurising, that's where Connor Clancy should be. Here's Anthony Daly, swinging around well in typical fashion. Dropped by Dohi Regan initially. Chance now once again to lay siege on the Clare goal. Good hand pass. Michael Dignan motoring in, looking around to see what's on. Stopped! Mistake by David Fitzgerald. Michael Dignan, I think, will take the credit. That with just two minutes to go to half time. A player has had such a wonderful season. Goalkeeper David Fitzgerald, I think, deceived a bit by this one. He batted it down and agonizingly over his own end line, and there was no doubt about it. Hadn't made a mistake all through the championship campaign, and it happens in the final. Gerald Auckland responding quickly. Well, we've seen how goals have turned matches, even in recent Sundays. I'm thinking back to Dublin versus Cork. Will that be a watershed in this particular contest? That's right, and it's a bit of look like that that wins our Ireland's for you, you know. And even this shot by Michael Dygan, I, I would have said myself that he was going to take a point from where he was, you know, and uh, very unfortunate for David Fisher. I'm not quite sure whether it was a pass or a shot for a point, but you know where it ended up. Liam Doyle breaking it down, but only as far as John Troy. 
good spell this for Offaly. Will they now take full advantage? Well, that's another chance there for Johnny Pilkington. A mention of chances, they've had 11 so far. Same number as Clare. And you know the term, the number of scoring chances availed of. Offaly, seven. Clare, five, as you can see. Top left-hand corner of the screen. So inside the final minute of a tense All-Ireland final, Conor Clancy trying to make amends for that one that crept, crept in there. Fergal Hegarty drops it in and it's gone over the bar. It's the kill Mamona man, Fergal Hegarty who gets the point. Three between them, it's nothing in a final, it's nothing in any kind of hurling match. One here by James O'Connor. Alert to the possibilities inside towards Gerald Lachlan. Sweeping aside the challenge there of Shane McGuckin. Here's where they need a score, and he's the provider. The Sparrow finally scores in injury time. And there are just two points between these teams. It's anybody's game. They're well aware of it. It's all to play for in the remaining 35 minutes. It's half-time here at Croke Park. Gerald Lachlan finishing very prominently there, getting that final point of the first half. The Clare followers cheering in their team. They're so delighted to be here, but they're very much in this in a meaningful way. In spite of that goal by Michael Dagnan with two minutes to go, half-time score, it's Offaly, 1-6. Clare, seven points. Pat Malachny with me, Pat, you're lucky to be in front, I'd say. Yeah, we are, we got a lucky goal there before half-time. Darton not hurling that well, and uh, we're, we've got the break, so hopefully we can do something about a half-time. We're not going that well, not happy enough. Do you think there'll be changes? I don't know, I don't know. OK, thank you, Pat. Pat Malachny from Cool Derry, one of the Offaly selectors, expressing the concern of Offaly at half-time. This All-Ireland final has a long way to go yet, 35 minutes of the second half after this commercial break. The scene at Croke Park at half time in the senior final, Offaly leading Clare on a scoreline of 1627 points. The half time entertainment with Finbar Wright of the Artane Boys Band and my lovely Rose of Clare. for all the Clare people here in Croke Park for the first time in 63 years for a final. Here's one they've heard at Croke Park before, the Offaly Rover.
Finbar Wright accompanied by the Artane Boys Band and also accompanied by some of the awfully faithful here at Croke Park today. In the presentation box with me, Ger Hegarty and DJ Carey. Uh, Ger, you tipped Clare before this match, but you have been impressed by Offaly's more direct style of play. Yes, Offaly are playing very direct. Um, Emma Craig and Stamp on, on the game has always been firm and direct player. And that's exactly as they have done from the work to, to, up from the very start. It's a typical example here. Dahi Regan wins the ball. I think he throws it back here to Johnny Trey. He simply throws it over the bar. Very simple and very direct. If you can get the ball over in two pucks, so be it. Um, you know, they're often seem to be getting scores. A little bit easier than Clare. Clare are getting scores, but they're having to work that extra bit hard. But there's only two points in it, Michael. It's very close, and I'd say both teams will be very confident to have time. DJ Offaly got a goal as well, of course, that also had a certain era of fortune about it. Let's take a look at this and see what your thoughts on it are. That's right. Well, as I said in the minor match, it's a, it's a very difficult day to control a ball. David Fitzgerald is used to a dry ball for the last three months, and on a day like today, it's a wet and heavy one. It comes in, he tries to control it, and it just skids off the hurl. You know, it's a good, it's a good goal for Offaly, but uh, it came just before half time, which is a great time to score. But Clare will go in and will be able to settle. You know, if that came five or ten minutes into the second half, there'd be no time to settle, and Offaly could tack on two or three points, which might put the game out of reach. But now, Clare came back, scored two good points, and are still very, very much in the match. So, DJ Offaly are back on the field again, just briefly before we go back to the commentary. With 35 minutes to go, who do you fancy? Well, I, I stick with Offaly, but uh, I mean, I've been impressed with, with Clare, especially their half back line and back line in general. So, uh, I stick with Offaly, but it's only. Yeah. because I went from in the beginning. Ger, I think you're beginning to change your mind a little. I'm not actually, Michael. I'm going to stick with Clare. I'm delighted to see um, James O'Connor going into his best position uh -huh. with his left half forward and Fergal, Her and Fergal Her Hegarty's gone out to midfield. Already that has made an impression in the sense that Brian Wheelham in the last ten minutes went out of the game and James went in there. I'm sticking with Clare. I still think Clare will win in the second half. Awfully, they have had some problems around the middle of the field. Awfully, I mean... Johnny Pilkinen has been more or less anonymous. You know, he's had two chances, at, uh, two shots at goal there, like the second half, which you'd normally expect him to get, and that he missed. Dahi Regan, you know, Dahi, he's kind of struggling out there as well. If anywhere, if, if there's any position in the field at Clare on top, I think it's at midfield. But I, I don't think Clare have, have really, really got going yet. And if they can get going in the second half, and maybe with their fitness in the last 15 minutes, I think I think it will tell. Gentlemen, thank you very much again for the moment. So then, uh, well, Clare got a tremendous reception. When they came out onto the field before this match, I'm sure their supporters will encourage them once again when they return to the field. In just a moment, let me hand you back again to our commentators, Tomás Mulcahy and Jer Canning. Yes, plenty of interesting comments there at half-time. Far be it from me to stoke an argument, but do you think Offaly are as much out of it as the panel feel at midfield? Certainly not, you know, and um, I mean, you take the last two Offaly points that they got, I think you have to give credit to Dahi Regan for getting those scores, and uh, I think Johnny Pickett has heard very well there. I mean, they had to take James O'Connor off him and put him into half hour, and that meant that Johnny Pickett was on top in his position. And here comes Anthony Daly then leading Clare back out for the second half. I'm sure Ger Lochnan has had plenty to say to them, given them plenty of encouragement as well. To win the Munster, of course, from their perspective was wonderful, and their fans as well. But to get here to the final, it's a bonus, but now they have to appreciate they're in there with a really good chance. And this player here, James e. O'Connor, surely is central to their plans if they do, in fact, hope to take the title. Here's Marty. Sir Lugnan, what do you say to your team at halftime? Well, we haven't played as well as we could in the first half, however, we've been, we've been against the wind. So now the game is going to be won now in the next 35 minutes, and I've just asked him to give him that last ounce for Clare for these 35 minutes. You think you're going to do it? We're going to do it. Prophetic words indeed, perhaps. The wind has whipped up, it's behind Clare for the second 35 minutes, and as you know, two between them. There's the position, one six to seven points. Straight away here is Frank Lowen. Distinguished himself well in the first half. Both sets of backs were really on top of their form. Well, it's awfully, of course, who got the only goal so far. To what extent do you feel that Clare need to get goals if they're going to win this match? Yes, they certainly need to get a lot more scores, you know. But what I'd like to see, I'd like to see Clare taking the game to awfully a bit more, you know. Uh, they've been a bit laid back, they've left awfully dictate things a small bit too much at this stage. And certainly the awfully backs have been very much dominant in the first half. Solly Baker touching it down, kicked away there by the flying feet of Anthony Daly. One back here by Brian Wheeler, a little block down there by P.G. O'Connell this time. O'Connell has started at left half forward on Wheeler. Racing out for it is Brian Lowen. And 
And that's a sideline ball. And away there, starting up with the second half. James O'Connor is right half forward. Connor Clancy is centre forward. PG O'Connor is left half forward for the Clare half forward line. And the Sparrow has now gone into full forward. So switches are plenty. Will they outfox awfully, however, the All-Ireland champions? Dohi Regan cuts it in, won by Liam Doyle, takes it away from Joe Dooley, won by Sean McMahon now. McMahon's lengthy clearance towards Conor Clancy, now on the 40, fumbles it. Brian Wilhelm takes it up, the Burma. Towards John Troy, touches it down to the waiting Johnny Dooley. I'm sure if the players are being affected by nerves or other conditions this afternoon, but there's not any great lengthy pulling of the ball, especially on the ground. Roughly, it'll be so good, Jarrah's hooking and blocking, and with the man in possession, have taken the ball off him, and they've been very good at that. And defence for them begins with number 15, really. He puts the corner back under pressure. So difficult to play against. Johnny Pilkington, delightfully up towards Billy Dooley. Breaks down towards Pat O'Connor, awfully attacking what they would regard as the goal-scoring end, the railway end of Croke Park. Brian Lohan appealing there and winning his free. But under incessant pressure by this man here, Pat O'Connor of Cool Derry. Cousin of the great Pat Carroll. Sadly passed away about ten years ago. Awfully star of yesteryear. James O'Connor has now, by the way, gone back onto Brian Wheelan once again as we watch Ollie Baker leave it there for P.G. O'Connor. Now Connor Clancy running into a dark alley and runs right through there. Pressure here, a plenty on the Offaly backs, and it's Kevin Keenahan. Clears it forward as far as Johnny Pilkington. A stunned, determined run there by Ollie Baker. Kevin Martin leaves it behind. Here's Baker, here's a chance, and it's gone wide. There was good teamwork there involving P.G. O'Connell and Ollie Baker. O'Connell kept Kevin Martin very busy to set up the chance for this man here. Couldn't avail of it. And that finishes up being a sideline ball to Clare. Another wasted possession from the puck out there from David Hughes. Clare following now, having enjoyed the occasion so far. I'm sure the players would want him to get right behind and to raise the rafters, as it were. Here's Anthony Daly. Kevin Martin misses it. Runs on towards Stephen McNamara. A wonderful pick-up. Stopped initially. Hubert Rigney back there. Playing a very thoughtful game. Out by Martin Hanneby. Now Dohi Regan. Good ball forward, diagonally so to Pat O'Connor. Brian Lowen put under pressure. Likewise, Michael O'Halloran. And here comes Pat O'Connor once again. Down at the goal where he scored a goal in last year's All Ireland final against Limerick. Pressure really in there on the Clare back line. And Brian Lowen keeping a cool head. And the hooks and the blocks so effective there. Here's Billy Dooley. This is awfully in full flight, making life so awkward if you're a cornerback or a fullback. Here's Brian Lowe, or Frank Lowen, through the centre here to Conor Clancy. Didn't get much length in it. Martin Hanami for Offaly. Back down into space. There are two Offaly players there waiting for it. But likewise, Ali Baker runs on to Joe Dooley. Outside to John Troy. Troy from the 45 metre line. That's a good chance. And he's missed it. A rueful look there on the face of young John Troy. Minor goalkeeper when these counties clashed in 1989 in the All-Ireland Minor Final. Davy Fitzgerald's puck out right through the centre, broken down by Conor Clancy to Ollie Baker, pursued by Johnny Pilkington, fed inside towards the Sparrow, now at full forward. Can't get through, however. Keenahan and Martin Hanami here have been busy, but that's good stick work for Stephen McNamara, and it ends up being a 65. Clever work by the Clare, number 13. And coming right across there was the other man in that full back line, Shane McGuckin. Well, he'll want to make up for the disappointing day he had last year against Damien Quigley in the All Ireland final against Limerick, and he did so well there, sweeping right across the line. Here's the 65. Sean McMahon's got one so far. 
looking for his third point to put just one between them. High up into the air, measured well, and over the bar! Another 65 for the king of the 65, Sean McMahon. One point the margin, and the fabulous Bearfield boys with the flag up there. St. Joseph's from Dura Bearfield. One of their players, of course, Sean McMahon. Ollie Baker there. Baker also from the same club. Hagerty knocking it through to Connor Clancy. He's got a new lease of life out at centre half forward. David Hughes knocking it back defiantly. Joe Dooley watching the flight path of the ball. But it's won instead by Liam Doyle. A marvellous wing back for Clare. Into space. Trying to cause some problems, and they do. Stephen McNamara looking for the equaliser. And it's gone to the left. A look of resignation, I think, on Stephen McNamara's face. This grandson of the great late Jackie Parr of Limerick, of course, who won two All-Ireland hurling medals. And, of course, his Uncle Joe won eight for the Kerry footballers. And he was close there to getting his first point in this match. there on the far side that Declan Pilkington is getting ready and Eamon Cregan I think is ready to take remedial action Michael Dignan now has gone to full forward in a switch with Pat O'Connor likewise, likewise Declan Pilkington is uh, still over there preparing to come in perhaps here's his brother Johnny the team captain getting away from Ollie Baker fed on magnificently there by Dohi Regan Brian Lohan again first to the ball Michael Dignan is the latest to be put in there at full forward. Here's Liam Doyle. Nicely swung in there towards the Sparrow. Keenan, that's tremendous full back play. Not a very long clearance, but effective nonetheless. Out from Johnny Pilking to the Joe Dooley. Now Joe John Troy. Pat O'Connor has lost the stick, but he held his balance. He was fouled. And he gets the free in. And it's Michael O'Halloran going back there to remonstrate with the referee. This is uh, just a moment to go here. A magnificent illustration of high fetching by a determined fullback in top form. It's a great play by Kevin Keenan, and he's certainly dominant around the square there for Offaly. You may, rem may remember the day in the league, the semi final against Kilkenny. Indeed, you're one of our panelists today and had a very bad afternoon, but my goodness, how he's come back really strongly. That's Johnny Dooley, and that's a fourth point. And now two between them once again. There's been that little two-point gap for most of this match. Ollie Baker is in trouble once again, down here in the centre of the field. The ankle is certainly causing some problems. Ollie, who came on in the first championship match of the season in the semi-final of the Munster against Cork, did so well. Credited with the goal, of course, that won it for Clare at the very end of that game Ollie's back in the middle of the field both counties feel they're in with a real chance Sherlock now you can be certain feels they're there you heard him say we'll win it will they 25 minutes are there about still to go that's one again by Dohi Regan he's playing a tremendous match out of midfield on there for Michael Dignan Trying to push Brian Lohan out of his way, fit inside for John Troy, but the hand pass was not perfectly executed, and Troy was just moving ahead of the ball, and it's Liam Doyle who makes the clearance. That's wonderfully caught by Brian Whelan. Down into the corner, Billy Dooley beaten for it by Frank Lowe, and he's played really well. Anthony Daly giving leadership. Downfield towards Stephen McNamara, in over his head, and it's Kevin Keenahan again who comes from behind, makes another great clearance with the left hand. Holds on securely. I think the worrying thing from the Offaly point of view, Gerald, is that they've got an awful lot of possession up front, but very little return from, their, from, that, from that bit of possession that they had in the, in the second half, you know, and uh, Clare are very much still in this game. There's a long way to go, and if this stays the scores like this, you know, we're in for a very, very tense ten, last 10 15 minutes. Yes, it sounds very simplistic, but as long as it stays as tight as this, the underdogs from Clare are in there with a real chance. P.J. O'Connell towards James e. O'Connor. So influential, so important. Fergal Hegarty, great block down. 
Kevin Martin in there again, trying to limit the effectiveness of the half forward. It gets in as far as Conor Clancy. Clancy now back in at full forward again because Kevin Keenan had begun to lord it. And there's a shot that is put over the bar by Fergie Tui. A second point for the Clare Castle man. Clare edge within a point of the All Ireland champions. Well, we talked about the Clare fans being everywhere and anywhere. They look like they've got about half Hill 16 as well. They must have been printing their own tickets. Yes, and Eamon Cregan has been in there having a word with Michael Dignan over that last hand pass that he took. I reckon he would have felt he should have put the ball over the bar. Here's Brian Lowen. So who's it to be in the 1995 Guinness All-Ireland Final? Liam Doyle, that's a lovely block again there by Joe Dooley. Again, Liam Doyle. Just when Clare look like they're about to get the ball away, there are hooks and there are knocks down and blocks of all kinds. Hubert Rigney bats it, but not so effectively. Comes out instead towards Kevin Martin, put under incessant pressure. Here's Fergie Tui. Tui scampering away, Johnny Pilkington getting back, making a half challenge on that one. It reaches James O'Connor, one between them, Clare trailing. James O'Connor putting it in, putting it high, putting it off the post. It came off the post of P.J. O'Connor, comes back down again to Osio McNamara. Here's Fergie Tui, who started all of that. Now will he get it over? Yes, he will. The level. Level for the third time in this All-Ireland final. Clare becoming more expressive. Awfully, with plenty of possession, but unable to translate possession into needed scores. This is where that one came in from Fergie Tui, down off the post, and look who reacted quickly. Keenan was in there quickly, and it was scampered away somehow by Shane McGuckin. We know what happened after that. Anthony Daly, straight here to Johnny Pilkington. Is this just a hint of a crisis for Offaly? Look where Michael, or look where Pat O'Connor was waiting, just in case the ball came beyond the backs. But instead, it's Michael O'Halloran who has it. Held. Free to Clare. Clare are hurling very well at the moment, and uh, Fergus Tui gone in, sent the forward on Hubert Rigney, has made a big, big, big impact for Clare. Yes, it's O'Connell on the right, Fergie Tui, as you say, centre forward on Hubert Rigney, and Jamesy over there on Brian Wheelahan. David Fitzgerald with the free for Clare. Lands deep in Offaly's territory, dropped by Hubert Rigney, supported by Kevin Martin. Brian Wheelahan trying to get it one-handed away, hasn't been his usual highly influential self so far. Tony Considine and Mike McNamara, two of the Clare selectors, encouraging the referee. We may have a substitution, in fact we will, and it's going to be Declan Pilkington, I think, coming in, Tony. Yes, indeed, and Pat O'Connor is the man to be called ashore for the moment. Also, as you can see, of course, Brendan Kelly has been warming up. They're thinking about a substitution for him as well, but for the moment, Pilkington in, O'Connor out. Thank you for that, Tony. James e. O'Connor dropped in deep. And, you know, but for that very fortunate goal that Michael Dykner managed to get just before half-time against A.B. Fitzgerald, Offaly would be in real trouble. And here's a, another change about to be made. Eamon Taff is about to come in for Clare. Not listed on the programme. But I can tell you it's definitely Eamon Taff. And Stephen McNamara is about to make way, I think. Taff had a wonderful league campaign, but then suffered injury in the championship. But he's a player of genuine class. Can he turn it now? Clare's way. It's level at the moment. James O'Connor from 65 metres out, going left. Guarded all the way there by David Hughes, and disappointment for Jamesy. Clare's tenth wide, by the way, awfully with just three. So Clare a bit more wasteful with their chances. And just like last year, anybody can win this final. Delicately balanced, the fans enjoying themselves. Clare making an unusual change, by the way, in the full forward line as you watch Sean McMahon. There are just two players in the full forward line right now. They're trying to try and drag players out of position if at all possible. 
That's right, Jerry. I think uh, Kevin Keenan has been so dominant in the round of square. Uh, Eamon Taff has come on and is starting to bring him out the field. Whether Kevin falls for that or not, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. As Sean McMahon goes down, wins the free. Yeah, the Sparrow is trying to take Keenan away from the edge of the square towards the right corner back position, but he's gone back in again now. Sean McMahon's free, just two men in the inside forward line momentarily. Broken away by Hubert Rigney. Shane McGoughan trying to feed it out to Brian Wheelahan. Out it comes towards Fraggle Hagerty, and that's gone wide. Clare now really with an awful lot of chances to take scores. And so far, as you can see, just 10 points to Offaly's 1-7. And awfully, the most difficult county, I would suggest, around to beat when there's still a couple of minutes left, even if you're a couple of points ahead of them. Wonderful catch, this time by Clancy. Much more expressive now around midfield and than he had been up to now inside on the fringe of the square. Here he is again, towards the Sparrow of Lachlan. Got a touch on it, runs on well here. And the referee allows play to continue. As Fergie Tui was chasing it after that one, Shane McGuckin, great catch. Luckily, backs not slow about putting the hand up and taking the ball with style. Likewise, mentioned style. How about Brian Lowen? That's a wonderful long clearance in towards Gerald Lachlan. Down it comes towards Taff. It's David Hughes who has it. It's a really enjoyable All Ireland final at this stage. The issue really in doubt. James O'Connor, players calling for it everywhere and anywhere. Here's Michael Dignan. The long ball down towards Billy Dooley. But Frank Lowen has the measure of that challenge, at least up to now. Dohi Regan. Knocked in adventurously, they chase in after it. Brian Lowen, someone got to stick to it. But only on as far as Billy Dooley. Dooley hand passing it back. Declan Perky the shot, tons of ricochet. Michael O'Halloran and Frank Lowen in there, and it's Brian Lowen who makes the clearance. That's terrific full-back play. I tell you, both full-backs in this match are playing stormers. Billy Dooley's final ball in there, missed by Brian Lowen in a typical fashion, and that's Joe Troy. Oh, let's go! Johnny Pilkington, right on the spot. 19 minutes into the second half. This is what happens. Blocks and hooks. Good stuff by Davy Fitzgerald. But in came Johnny Pilkington and he finished it right into the back of Davy Fitzgerald's goal, who's beaten for the second time. But on the ground there, he did well initially, but there was no stopping Johnny Pilkington. For the record, he went off the legs, I think, of Brian Lowen. But he couldn't do much about it. So is this now once again to be the turning point of an All Ireland final? John Troy, bad hand pass. Straight to Sean McMahon. Who will have the great inner belief and resolve now to carry through to the final whistle? Kevin Keenan would like to think the faithful county possess that particular combination. McMahon again. How well he's played at centre half back. Lobbed in there. But it's Brian Whelan who takes it. Looking for Johnny Dooley. It's stopped over there by Anthony Daly. All of a sudden, three points separating the teams. That's a good ball forward, but it's picked up once again here by Brian Lowen. John Troy is now at full forward, marking Brian Lowen. It's stopped by Shane McGuck. It comes back to Connor Clancy. James O'Connor now, and he's put it to the right. I think Conor Clancy was injured just after he passed that ball away to James O'Connor. But that's the kind of chance I think they should have been taking with only 15 minutes to go. Yes, definitely, especially after, after getting that goal. You know, it was a great chance for James O'Connor to bring two points in between the sides. You know. But they're still well in the game, you know, we still have 15 minutes to go. And if they can keep playing the way they're playing at this point in time, Clare still are well in with a great chance. So Clancy from Kilmele receiving the attentions. Colin Flynn is in there along with Conor Fanning and the trophy, the Liam McCarthy Cup. And will this be the moment 
Well, the match turned in Offaly's direction. That's a fine save by David Fitzgerald, but great follow-up play. It trickled off the leg, I think, of Brian Lowen, and a delighted Joe Dooley was celebrating. Pulling all around. Fergal Hagerty without the stick. One back here by Kevin Martin. Offaly again now trying to put the Clare backs under repeated pressure. Declan Pilkington knocking the bat for his troubles from Ali Baker as he plays it forward towards John Troy. Troy now settling to his task. Useful looking shot, but it goes to the right. Not too much in that. When you look at the scores, Jar, I mean, it's 2 7 to 10 points. Our clear scored 10 points, and Offaly scored 9. The diff big difference is the two goals. Offaly's ability to score goals. Hubert Rigney waiting for it. Michael Dignan back around midfield at this stage. And you have to say that uh, Offaly have made some very good switches in this match. Johnny Dooley. Low inside, stopped by Brian Lowen. Great clearance to midfield towards Ollie Baker. Good catch in the air ahead of Johnny Pilkington. He's got the second of Offaly's goals. Released outside towards Connor Clancy. Clancy. Oh, running into a cul de sac. Not by Johnny Pilkington, who is erstwhile midfield partner, Dohi Regan. And this time it's Offaly who are using the space of Croke Park, exposing the Clare defence. And that's another poor miss by John Troy. I don't think the management and selectors will be too pleased about the chances he's had in the last few minutes. No, certainly not. He's definitely got a few chances there to put the game beyond clear and uh, unfortunately hasn't taken them. Hopefully with five wides against 12 for Clare have been much the more profligate so far. Fergal Hagerty onto the dashing James e. O'Connor. And I think he knew from the minute he released that one that it was uh, not destined to go over David Hughes crossbar. So what will Jerry Lock now do? Pat Fitzgerald there perhaps uh, been instructed and a further change is to be made and it looks to me like Cyril Lyons is about to come in or is it Cyril Lyons? Yes it is so maybe Clare will opt for the experience Dohi Regan Johnny Dooley pulling on it now a race for possession here involving John Troy and Brian Lohan. Troy does well, just holding it up. Good vision then to pick out Joe Dooley. Good block by Ali Baker. Liam Doyle coming to the assistance of the number nine for Clare. Gets away, opens up the broad shoulders. A mighty delivery, but it's going away right. And they needed a more subtle touch inside. Eamon Tapp, you can gather by his demeanour, wasn't too pleased by the length of that pass. I think we've often said it in the past here, you know, hitting balls wide when there's no chance of scoring rather than letting it in low to full forward and keeping the, keep the ball in possession. And a change for Offaly, it's Brendan Kelly coming into the game and Joe Dooley is coming off. Well, Joe's the experienced man, of course, of Offaly hurling. So Brendan Kelly getting his chance to enjoy the last 10 minutes perhaps but it's still a tight enough match only three minutes to go and you remember what happened last year it was Limerick at that stage five points ahead and five minutes to go Johnny Dooley who started the recovery on that occasion John Troy missed it oh it's swept away there by David Fitzgerald good save by the keeper Liam Doyle PJ O'Connell has had his moments Likewise, Fergie Tui. Three very good points from Tui. This time, a better ball inside towards Cyril Lyons. And it's won, however, by Kevin Keenan once again. This is the save just a moment ago here by David Fitzgerald. And he's had to recover his composure and his confidence after the lapse in the first half. I wouldn't like to have to pick a, an all star fullback between Brian Lowen and Kevin Keenan this year, I tell you. No, certainly it has been two outstanding performances today by the two full backs. So let us hope that he's able to continue and Eamon Cregan there with a clenched fist, great determination. 
wanting to coach the first ever Otley side to a two in a row. This is the catch again, came down awkwardly, challenged strongly by Eamon Taft. He's playing on, Fitz David Hughes puck out. Declan Pilkington chasing. Inside towards Dylan Dooley. There's another big date, of course. This time at the altar and next Saturday when he gets married. Sean McMahon, meanwhile. Towards Eamon Taff. Kevin Martin. A great couple of seasons he's had in the Oakley Colours. And the Tullamore man has made a good 40 yards. Now he's going for the point, but he's put it wide. Time ticking away, however. And from a clear perspective, just about seven minutes to go, plus a bit of injury time. Johnny Pilkington makes a fine catch across towards Johnny Dooley's corner. Anthony Daly. And he's limited Johnny Dooley to just one point from play this afternoon. In it goes, dangerously so. Cyril Lyons has the chance here. The Sparrow likewise. Good save on the line. And it comes to Raymond Taft. Awfully living dangerously and just three points between them. Oh, that could have been such a vital score had Clare been able to get a chance on it. McMahon is injured and fouled by Johnny Dooley. This was the chance just a few seconds ago. Watch as the Sparrow and Surrey Lions were going in there. And what a good hook. And once again, it's Shane McGuckin who got to it, along with Brian Wheelahan. Free to Clare. James e. O'Connor. It's gone wide. They've been wasteful with a lot of their useful chances that they've been taking up to now in the championship. Yes, yeah, certainly, Jerry. You know, they've missed an awful lot of ways there in the last 10, 15 minutes. But great credit again to the off the defence. Great skill in hooking and blocking and getting the ball out of defence. For the record, James O'Connor's had seven shots of goal. He scored just once. Ollie Baker bats it down, but there are a couple of Offaly players anticipating, I think, another All-Ireland success here. But Clare back there, playing as a team, as a unit. Anthony Daly, stopped again by Kevin Martin. But this is James O'Connor, shrugging aside, I'm sure, previous disappointments, the pass outside to Fergie Tui. How they need a score. Can he provide it? And the answer is yes. Two points the margin after Fergie Tui's fourth point of the day. Offley 2-7, Clare 11 points. They believe it's still possible. The president looks on, enthralled, I'm sure, by a gripping contest. James O'Connor, ball picked up, free to Offaly. So Offaly with just nine scores so far against Clare's 11 of those two vital goals. To Johnny Pilkington in the second half and Michael Dignan towards the end of the first. Now Johnny Dooley. This is just inside the 65 metre line. Dropped in high and well saved by goalkeeper David Fitzgerald. Others might have given up on it. Holly Baker breaks it down to the waiting Sean McMahon. Claire coming foraging but stopped by little hooks and blocks and shimmies by a determined and skillful All-Ireland Championship winning team from Offaly last year. And looking to retain their title here. Now there's pressure on them. Keenan again. What a wonderful catch. The distribution outside to Shane McGuckin. What an exhibition of catching by the Offaly fullback. Johnny Dooley. It's broken down by Frank Lowen. Away from Billy Dooley. That's Liam Doyle. Frank Lowen trying to emerge with it, trying to take it away from Declan Pilkington, fouled right in front of the eyes of referee Dickie Murphy from Wexford. This was a wonderful catch. What is it, three or four catches he's made this afternoon? Absolutely magnificent skill. They're thinking about a substitution now themselves. Eamon Taff, who already came on as a sub, is about to come off the field to be replaced by Alan Neville as soon as Clare get a chance. That's free is swung in there, batted down by the goalkeeper. It's a goal! It's a goal by Evan Traff! Clare are in front! A clear goal! Coming with five minutes to go and a little under. Goalkeeper 
touched it down. And this is where Eamon Taft came in. Clare lead. Clare in front by a point. Well, they talked about the last five minutes last year. We've now got under four minutes to go. Are Clare about to take a second All-Ireland crown? The last in 1914. Johnny Dooley has a free. It's Eamon Taff who got the goal. And you heard from Tony, he was about to be replaced. And the ball's got over the bar. And the sides are level for the fifth time. Johnny Dooley's fifth point. What a match to us. Great excitement on the last couple of minutes, Joran. Awfully definitely paying the price for not putting away Clare earlier on, you know, and uh, great credit to Clare for coming back into the game that they were out of. So Clare right back in the match once again. Sides all square. Here's a sparrow. Helped on by Ollie Baker. Coming across is Brian Whelan. Does either side deserve to lose this? It's got to be a 65. A 65 then. Players going down with injuries. Players who must be exhausted at this stage. It looks like Hubert Rigney. And Hubert had an injury during this championship earlier on, but this time it's just cramp, I feel. Every chance is going to be absolutely critical. What an afternoon we've had in Croke Park. They were nervous and tentative earlier on. As you'd expect, defences were on top. The faces in the Clare crowd. A sea of faces from the Banner County, willing their team on. The curse of Biddy Early has been broken, well and truly. Eamon Cregan making sure that Hubert Rigney's OK, and we have further news. Well, it's Joe Errity is the one getting ready to come on. If Hubert isn't OK, Joe's taken off his tracksuit, perhaps getting ready to enter the fray. Here's the 65 from Anthony Daly. Where's it going? Over the bar! The captain has put his side in front. Just over a minute and 20 seconds to go. From the 65... It's Clare who lead. My goodness. Back it comes to Fergie Tui again. Tui's shot reigns in, but to the right this time. What a match. My goodness, is she feeling the tension? Are we all, I think? Awfully this year, being put to the pin of their colours. In spite of a great goal in the second half, credited to Johnny Pilkington. They're still there. So to Clare. On my watch, 35 seconds of normal time to go. Here's P.G. O'Connell. Will he score here? It's stopped by David Hughes. Well, that's when they wanted O'Connell to chip in with his first point of this final. He failed to do so. Kevin Martin, straight to Johnny Pilkington. Now with the minimum of fuss. Can they draw a level off the post? It comes. Pilkington was so unlucky. Out it comes somehow. Frank Lowen, assisted there by Anthony Daly. The Banner men lead. 15 points to 14. 112 to 2 8. Fergie to his shot. In as dramatic a finish as you could hope for an All Ireland final. Sarah Lyons dispossesses Kevin Keenahan. The referee's whistle signalling that it's going to be a free in. That this is an easy enough chance. Yes, great chance for Clare to go two points ahead now, and certainly that should be the end of the game at that stage. There'll be tears, tears of joy if they can do it. Look at this. James O'Connor. Score of just one point so far from seven or eight chances. And if Jamesy puts this over the bar, I don't think he's going to be too worried about the ones that have gone by. Absolutely not. And he's done so! Jamesy's second point! I'm sure there's a loss there tomorrow in Clare in St. Flannans. And Clare are just about to win! They've won! Clare have won the All-Ireland! What a victory! A tribute to determination and no little craft. Well 
coached by Joe Lachnan. He told us at halftime they'd do it. He said they'd win the monster. They did. Eat your heart out, Biddy Early. Clare have done it by two points. 113 to 28. What a dramatic finale. There's no sport like it. Nothing whatsoever to rival this. We thought it was superb and brilliant, and indeed it was in the last five minutes last year. But they've come with a moving display in the second half. They were not going to be beaten. The Clare management made astute switches and changes. They tried to do an Eamon Cregan on it and outfox him. We've got some news now from the sideline from Tony on a dramatic day for the Banner County. And what news I have, Clare of the All Ireland Champions, Gerald Offnan with me. Gerald, fantastic. Oh, just unbelievable, Tony. I can't believe it. This time last year, we were in the depths of despair after being beaten in two months of finals. Here we are 12 months later, All Ireland Champions. Funny. We met tomorrow night a year, it was the first time we met Mike Mack, Tony Constantine and myself. Now we're the champions, unbelievable. You told us at half time you weren't going to win it. Well, we weren't going to surrender. By well, Jesus, we weren't going to surrender today. We were going to give it everything in pure heart is what gave us in it in the second half. The lads were just fantastic. You well done, you deserve it. Thanks very much. Well done to Joe Lockdown and to Tony O'Donoghue for getting the interview straight away for us here. Hope you've enjoyed this coverage. We're still to hear from the players, of course. We're still to see the celebration. But they're going to start now. Forget about the cows in County Clare. Somebody will look after them. They've been on automatic pilot since July when they won in Thurles anyway. They know how to celebrate. Famous for their song and their music and their lore. Tales of great players in the past. But now they've got their modern day crop of wonderful players for the youth of Clare to look up to. What a homecoming they'll have tomorrow night in Ennis. And before that, when they go into Clare Castle, I'm sure, which was an absolute sea of colour. Something I've never seen anywhere before. They really, really were delighted to be in the All Ireland final. It meant so much for the people of this county. They've served a long apprenticeship at the Munster Championship. Perennial losers they were, but Gerlach Nan building on the work of Len Gaynor before him. The Clare County Board making very astute moves to bring in clever people, good coaches, people who know the game, people who can rally and encourage the young players of Clare to put on a performance like we witnessed this afternoon. From Davy Fitzgerald as well. In his household, of course, it's all hurling. His dad, as we told you earlier, is the Clare County Secretary and had the headache of distributing the tickets, which he's obviously done well. The bachelors from Clare take the title, helped, of course, by one or two married lads who came on as substitutes. And what a great occasion as well for Cyril Lyons to come in. He's been part of Clare matches over the years and others who played their part during the championship players like Jim McInerney and many others there wasn't a weak link there when they were put to the pin of their collar they had the response it's a day for the saffron and blue and not surprisingly barriers and gates coming a cropper everybody wants to be out there but the sea that's in front of us right now is an amazing scene ready for the presentation the Vikings from Clare have done it. Robert Frost there, chairman of the county board in picture. A proud man. There were hundreds and hundreds of people watching training last Tuesday night when I was down there. And Robert was so enthusiastic about their chances. They didn't want to wish too much because they've had so many disappointments in the past when they were so close or so they thought. But this is the scene that's in front of the presentation area right now. A day when everybody, I suppose, wants to be a Clare man or a Clare woman. And Offley will not begrudge them this title. Offley had a great chance of taking two in a row. It just didn't happen. At a critical stage in the match, Clare came good. Got the vital scores. That goal by Eamon Taft, really turning it in Clare's direction. And Jack Boozman is ready to make the Probably presentation. Anthony Daly. Has anyone seen Anthony Daly?
Has that ever happened before? Where is the Clare captain? Well, he hasn't gone AWOL, I tell you. He's just been swallowed up by all the happy, happy people of Clare. I think 31 counties are probably celebrating this victory. It's a victory for what you can do when you organise at grassroots level and build up in a slow, methodical fashion. That's what Clare has done. It's a victory for hurling as well. It's in the second half we had a very, very spirited and wholehearted contest. So young and old alike coming in here. And the Moyer there doing a very wise thing, helping the people in. It would be a shame if anything catastrophic were to happen in terms of a crush or anything like that. It's just good humoured. Anthony Daly is finally about to make his way up here to take the Liam McCarthy Cup. In 1914, there was no Liam McCarthy Cup. That wasn't presented until 1921. So he becomes the first Clare man to Anthony lift the McCarthy Daly Cup on the, on the day Clare take their second All-Ireland. Offaly had their great day in 1981. Goal we remember in 1980. And success before that as well. But this is Clare's day. And the Taoiseach there wanting to congratulate Anthony Daly, former president, Hillary there as well. Great Clare man that he is. A hating hard vera, hard asphalt, August Fashilta, Ferdinand Tar, August Mithran Tar. Ta, and they have fought a heart. The long wait is over. lasting about 20 minutes, but I'm going to throw that away because tonight is a, today is a day for celebration. First of all, Pogorgus, the Ferdinand Tower. The Afalia, near Evan Talib, and your is keen to come in to the Russia race or what. This has been a unique occasion for coming out last day. Skolan, Ardua, Ardan, Ardua, and a victory for Clare after how many years? It's also the first. It is also the first All Ireland Hurling Championship that has been sponsored, and I'm delighted to have Mr. Colin Storm representing Guinnesses, who are our sponsors for this this hurling championship. But enough said. Once again, our sympathies to Offaly. Congratulations to. On Clare, and his next in front of me, on Curtin Show, or on Captain Anthony O'Dolly. Perhaps you thought it would never happen. It has. Clare are the All Ireland Hurling Champions, and Anthony Daly lifts the McCarthy Cup for 1995. What a day, and what a year! Scenes of absolute jubilation. The Barons beat. It's a memorable, memorable occasion. Oh, come on. Oh, come on, come and look at scale. Panas and down on And currently in the colleague show. A glacker. There's some fairly money, as Kundal Tower. There's been there's been a missing person in jail for 81 long years. Well, today that person has been found. Alive and well, and that person's name is Liam McCarthy. In that long, in that long period, you, the people of Clare. And every person who ever wore the saffron and blue with pride has suffered much. 
We have listened to many, many jibes down through the years. We were told to stick to our traditional music. Well, in clear, we love our traditional music, but we love our hurling as well. <laughs> 1995 will go down in history as the greatest year in Clare GAA. That 1995 became that year was no accident. Many people are due many thanks so that today might have become a reality. And I think first and foremost at this time of the many great Clare teams down through the years who never, many of those teams were better than this Clare team, but they were never as fortunate as we were. Now, we accept this Liam McCarthy Cup on behalf of all of those teams, whoever wore the Clare jersey. As I said, many tributes are due to many people, and it's very hard to name out everybody. And I think I covered a lot of people in the Munster final speech. But the county board and our sponsor, Pat O'Donnell, deserve special mention. <laughs> our medical people, Dr. Padre Quinn, Dr. Connor Fenning, Colin Flynn, and two others that I think are Ursula Lucknan and Jojo Horn. But mostly, I suppose, on this great day, tribute is due to three great men. Firstly, to our selector and mentor, and the man for, for whom at many stages he kept the ship afloat, the man from Cretlow, Tony Considine. The man, the man who drove us to hell and back and broke our backs in Shannon, in Crusheen, everywhere we trained. The Scarif public and the great Mike McNamara. <laughs> and finally, the man who would die and has died for clear hurling and so that this day his obsession might become a reality. A man who gave every last drop of sweat and blood he had, the great Gerlach Nan. <laughs> it's gonna be one hell of a week, and we look forward to seeing you in Ennis tomorrow night. Finally, finally we say to Offaly, for many years you have been our inspiration. We looked at your success story and said, why can't we achieve that? And we thank you sincerely for a great struggle today. And we know that Offaly Hurling is so strong now that it'll be back again. Three cheers for Offaly. Hip, hip. Hip, hip. Well, at the beginning of this year's championship, could you have imagined that Anthony Daly would be up there at uh, Croke Park in the Hogan Stand accepting the Liam McCarthy Cup? That is the situation. What a fabulous, fabulous scene here. We take a